Hi everybody, this is just a very quick video to give you an overview of uh, MicroPython running on the uh, on XB3. Um, it's a through-hole device. It's fitted to a Grove board. It's in the little sub in the corner here. Uh, it's connected by USB to my PC, and the wires are running soldered through the the, the breakout the breakout pins here. Uh, with some scrappy scrappy wire uh, to um, a breadboard. Breadboard's fitted with a uh, BP180 um, pressure and um, uh, temperature gauge, a OLED 128 by uh, 64 pixels, uh, a board here ready to take the the XB. And um, and running a little a little 3.3 uh, volt converter power supply from 12 volts. So we're sharing the ground and the uh, and the connections to the uh, single SP sorry I2C interface on the uh, on the, on the XB. Uh, the I think that's pin um, uh, DIO one and DIO seven. They can be. They were configured uh, in the uh, XB configuration, but I think that's unnecessary. As soon as you use them in MicroPython, they're they're, they're correctly or automatically set up. Um, the the reason why the XB is on the Grove board is essentially just for this. It's got an FTDI chip on it, and that allows me to make a connection to. Um, my PC via um, the USB cable as a serial UART device. Um, okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at PyCharm when it's fully configured for this particular XB. Uh, with a, uh, we're using the PyCharm XB plugin from Digi. Uh, this is the uh, community edition of of, uh, of PyCharm. 2020.1. Um, I'll just show you that we're running the the, the plugin. Um, if I look at uh, settings, I should see the plugins. Well, we can see a few already that we have the uh, that we have an XB project here, um, and that we're using the XB MicroPython plugin from Digi International. Um, what can we see? Well, right now I've got a a, a, a REPL console opened for the XB. If I press reset on the XB, we'll see that it resets the console. If I do Control D, oops, I do Control D, I get the same thing. So we can read a little bit more about the um, MicroPython version and a little bit about the the XB's firmware. And the XB that's the fitted. Okay, um, we can see that we've made uh, a connection on COM8. And this is the configuration of the of the port. Um, I would use XCTU to set this up. We can see that I'm using the uh, my M the MY sort of. 16-bit address as 9 EEB, and that happens to be the last four of the uh, of the essentially the sort of the ID of the of the uh, of the device. Um, going back to PyCharm, here we can see that I've got the uh, the XB device selected. I can see that I'm using, and I've got the configuration for this particular project, and. The modules can be discovered in the same way as uh, they can using X in a similar way to XCTU. So I haven't got any more devices disconnected to my computer. And one of the issues at the moment is we can't do this over the air. It'd be nice to have this um, set up on the board, but we can't at the moment. Um, and that's essentially because of the console. Um, they or these devices can do Bluetooth, and I would hope at some point we'll be able to look at 
setting up a, well, I, unfortunately I'd have to have a Bluetooth low energy enabled PC or a dongle on my PC and I might be able to then use a remote serial connection uh, via, the B, via BLE. But right now it's wired, hence the, hence the, uh, the use of the wires here and the wire to and, and the USB cable. Okay, so Pi Charm. Um, let's close this this file here. Um, essentially, the organisation of the uh, project is that we have a library on the a library folder that's going to be written to the device um, and a main Python file. Uh, we don't need README or the license, but we will need the font file. Um, let's just check what we've got on here. So if you've never used um, MicroPython on the XB before, um, it's quite nice. We can look at the help. It tells us how to use our REPL. If you go help, modules, we see the modules. If we use, if we load a module, um, we'll do import um, OS. No, we won't. I'm going to put my commands up. We'll do import OS, and then we'll go help OS. And we can see the functions that we want to do. We might do a, a list directory. We've got tab completion. And we see that we've got one library directory in the uh, in the in the on the flash drive. I'll clear the screen. Okay, so once we have a working or once we have a uh, have a um, a set of, uh, of files that we want to we want to get on the uh, on the module. Um, this is where the the, the um, PyCharm comes into its own. Really, um, it's quite straightforward to work with it. I'm simply going to press play or run, um, and we'll see that we'll. Uh, tell me that it hasn't. Uh, oh, let's have a look on, on main. Um, it hasn't found that the module here. Um, now I haven't put the path into the uh, this one. This is the error that's coming up. But um, anything in lib in the lib folder or in the main folder will be found by um, by the by MicroPython. Okay. So I'm going to do that again, but ignore the error. Continue anyway. You see, it creates the MPY versions of the of the files. It's flashing the files now. So it converts um, the .py files to the .mpy's. Flashes them. And then it runs the application. We see on the <laughs> very rapidly actually, we see uh, the notes. Um, it's saying hello world at the moment, and then it's finally finishing the the the, the, uh, the test. Might be interesting to see how much free memory we've got, I suppose. Import GC, and then we'll just check the free memory. Not a huge amount. So, a little bit of headroom left. Okay, I've made the webcam a little bit larger. In fact, we could even go bigger still, I think. We might be able to even read the read the screen and um, I'll do another reset
let's see if we can see what goes on a bit better than we did. Yes, we did see a little bit better. Okay. Thank you.